Hello, my name is Stephen Daniel with the Avaya Serviceability Engineering Team. This video is about how to configure and initialize the ION SA5600 SAL Avaya SAL Edition Secure Appliance. Before we begin the configuration, we'll first need to validate what logical COM port number our system is associating to our physical COM connection. The procedure shown here assumes you are using a Windows PC, though any system capable of communicating over a serial cable should work as well. In Windows, you can do this by viewing the Ports, COM, and LTP in the Hardware Device Manager. I happen to be using a USB to serial adapter, and as you can see here, my system recognizes my COM port as COM6. You'll want to take note of your COM port as you'll need it later. We next need to select a terminal emulation program to communicate with the SA5600. All versions of Windows ship with HyperTerminal, but alternatively, you can use PuTTY or any other capable application. For this tutorial, I will be using PuTTY. However, I will still show you how to set up a connection to the SA5600 using HyperTerminal. Open the HyperTerminal application, then from the menu options, click on File, then New Connection. This will bring up the connection description window. In the name field, enter a description for this connection and then press OK. Next, we'll need to provide the connectivity details. Now, as you can see here, the Connect Using option defaults to the first adapter it found. In the case of my system, the built-in analog modem. Now, because this connection won't be over a modem, I'll need to change this connectivity option by dropping down from the Connect Using list, then select the appropriate COM port. If you recall, my COM port was COM6, so I'll select that here, and then click OK. We also need to define the transmission parameters. You'll want to set bits per second at 9600, data bits to 8, parity to none, stop bits to 1, and flow control to X on, X off. Go ahead and confirm these settings in your hyperterm, click apply, and then click OK. Now, if you hit enter a couple of times, you should see the prompt become active with dialog from the SA5600 as we have here. For the remainder of this tutorial, I will be using PuTTY. Now here again, before I start the configuration, let me quickly show you where in PuTTY you can set the serial transmission parameters. From the left navigation category options, you'll see as the last entry an option for serial. Click on that and you will see the transmission parameters as well as which COM port PuTTY should be using. Enter the parameters here as described a moment ago if you also plan on using PuTTY. Let's begin the configuration. As you can see here, I already have an active connection, so I'll go ahead and press enter a few times to wake up the prompt. A few tips about navigating through this session. For any active parameter, you can toggle through the available options by using the spacebar. You can see if I press the spacebar here, it toggles between yes and no. For the first question, begin aux port session, Accept the default of yes, then press enter. For connect as default user, again, accept the default of yes, then press enter. You will now be granted access to the SA5600 command prompt. When accessing the ION menu via the serial connection as the default user, this default user is admin with master access class and who possesses access to all menus and options. It is with this user that we'll complete our configuration. From this prompt, we can now begin command execution. The first command we'll need to execute is VT on. This command will turn on the VT100 emulation for us. Enter VT space on, but before pressing enter, here's another helpful tip. If you need to delete any characters and your backspace key does not work, you should be able to use Control H or Control Backspace to delete characters. PuTTY defaults to Control H. Now go ahead and press enter, and as you can see, our VT100 terminal emulation is set to on. Let's move on and configure the external IP address for the SA5600. Enter the command SNP1 for set network parameters. For restore factory defaults, accept the default of no and then press enter. Now it's important you understand that these parameters are for the left network interface or interface 1 at the rear of the SA5600. Also, you'll notice that we can actually define two interfaces here, an internal and external. As I alluded to a moment ago, we will be configuring the external interface. We now want to move our cursor to the external interface field. And the way you do this is by pressing the enter key. This will allow you to move down the list. Let's do that now until our cursor is positioned on the words auto sensing. 
Begin by setting the interface port speed duplex settings. Like earlier, you can toggle through the available selections by using the spacebar. For my network, my switch is set to auto negotiate, so I will leave this parameter at auto sensing. Press enter again to move your cursor to the external address field. This is where we define the IP address of the SA5600 cell. You'll first need to delete the current entry and you do that by using the key combination control X. Once you have that deleted, type in the IP address of your SA5600. Press enter again to move to the mask parameter and just like above, control X to remove the existing entry. Then type in the value for your subnet mask. We'll repeat this two more times for default gateway and name server, which is the IP address of your DNS server. You can skip over PPP address and PPP peer address to complete this entry. This process of accepting your changes takes about 20 to 30 seconds, at which point your prompt will be silent, but eventually return to you. We're almost there. We now need to set the date and time. We can do this in one of two ways, manually using the local internal clock or configuring the SA5600 to synchronize off an NTP server. I will demonstrate both. Beginning with the internal clock, enter the command SDT for set date time, then press return. First, select the date format that is appropriate for you, again by using the spacebar to toggle through the available selections, then press return. Set the current date, again removing the existing entry using the control X key combination, then press return again. Set the current time, press return, set your GMT area, press return, set your GMT local, press return, and if applicable, set observe DST, daylight savings time, to yes or no, then press return. This completes the entry for using the local clock. If you prefer to use an NTP server, you can do so by using the NTP command. From the command prompt, enter NTP, then press return. Here you can define up to three time servers using the fully qualified domain name or IP address. Once you've defined your NTP servers, Move down to the Enable NTP Client parameter, ensure it is set to Yes, then press Return to complete this change. The required configuration for the SA5600 are now complete. Let's now confirm that our Cell Gateway Linux services are up and running and test connectivity to the Cell Gateway user interface. With the command Cell Stat, we can have the Ion Appliance query the Linux operating system for a status on the five Gateway Linux services. We'll enter that command here and press return. And as you can see, all five of my gateway services are up and running. Let's conclude this tutorial by making sure we can access the gateway UI via our web browser. For first time login, you'll need to use the root login with the default password in your setup guide. I'll launch my web browser and with the IP address of my cell gateway in the address bar, press return. I'll accept the presented security certificate and in a moment here, we now arrive at our gateway login prompt. I'll enter root for my login, enter the default password, again listed in my setup guide, and if I authenticate successfully, we'll arrive at the cell gateway UI landing page as shown here. Thank you for your time today. We welcome comments, questions, and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at avaya mentor. For more details or related information, please visit support at avaya.com. Thank you for choosing avaya.